wants her own talk show. Judge, not lest ye be judged, Sarah. And in our third story in the countdown, we now have a vague idea about the contents of her book, available for free with a subscription to virtually any right-wing magazine or website in America. The vague idea comes from the people who have survived the book, all five chapters of it. Five long chapters. Not incidentally, the former governor is eyeing this talk show, according to audience members, who witnessed Palin's interview with Oprah Winfrey, which was taped today. As for Palin's book, set for release next week, Time Magazine has culled various sources, Palin Associates, who know something of its contents. Some key elements. It is comprised of just five chapters. Five really long chapters. To put this into some perspective, Moby Dick has 133 chapters. A recent Superman comic book has three chapters. Palin's book also said to feature score settling with certain McCain aides who will be named. A healthy bashing of the national media. Hi. Let's check to see if my name was spelled correctly. How her upbringing made her all mavericky. A testimonial to her faith, presumably not including that witch hunting guy in Wasilla. And all of it written in a warm, personal tone, reportedly written in Palin's own voice, despite the involvement, wink, wink, of a collaborator. Despite? A good collaborator adopts the tone of the author, so there's no good reason to think that Palin would have needed to go to Herculean efforts to inject her so-called warm, personal tone, unless that tone doesn't come easily for her. Palin's book does not include hefty policy prescriptions, reportedly. It has no index. More on the possible implications of no index in a moment. We here at Countdown don't doubt that all that great stuff will be in the book. We have made an educated guess now about the most important thing, the chapter titles. Chapter 1, Education. Four colleges, one of them twice, are better than one. Chapter 2, Sports. I like it when they win. <laughs> Chapter 3, Family. Todd is crazier than I am. Chapter 4, Alaska, we hunt because we eat. And also chapter five, politics. I can see the future from my present. Let's bring in an actual author, MSNBC political analyst, and a book that does not come free with cereal, Renegade, the Making of a President, Richard Wolf, also senior strategist at uh, Public Strategies. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. I'll be asking you for my next chapter titles. Thank you. So I'm happy to oblige. Uh, talk show? I mean, we'd all suspected that was a, an option, but... Uh, Talk show? I, I hear there's an opening at 7 o'clock on CNN. Uh, yeah, it could work. But uh, look, here's what we know about Sarah Palin. She thinks everything is easy because, hey, there was this guy called Barack Obama and he got elected. Mm -hmm. So how hard can it be? You write a book and, and then you become president. And, and by all uh, my sources, the people in the publishing industry, the uh, folks on the political circles, who some of whom have actually seen this book, there has been a, a huge amount of planning and effort into this rollout but typical for Sarah Palin. She goes on a talk show and thinks she can do it too. I mean, you know, how hard can it be to be Oprah Winfrey? It, it, this is a pattern here, and, and for all of the prep work, for all of the, the tour to the battleground states, this is no small book tour that she's got lined up. It obviously has a political angle to it, but hey, she just wants to commandeer the bus and drive it straight into the ditch in Michigan or wherever she wants to go. Um, the book, no index, five chapters, is the premise of this, and, and the, there was speculation in, in time that the, the, the speculation was twofold here about why there was no, no, no index in it. It would force people to actually read through it, uh, because in Washington you never read the book except the parts that, are, that you find about yourself in the index. So there's no index. It's an up yours to the, to the Washington, to the Beltway establishment that there's no index to skip to. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, find that a hard one to agree with. You know, often when a book is uh, crashed like this, and it may be a train wreck in a completely different sense, but when they are rushing the schedule, there is no time to put an index together because the page numbers are changing. There may also be a cost factor. She didn't want to waste the money on it. But uh, there are other explanations than, than telling Washington to go screw itself. So I, I, I don't buy the index argument at this point. Sorry. Mm -hmm. There's another one. I remember just the book I did with Dan Patrick 11 years ago. The index would have been, we, we dropped so many names, the index would have been 44 pages long. <laughs> right. Um, there is that, too. There is that, too. Does, the, does this structure, five um, long chapters, suggest that she might have ignored editorial suggestions here? I mean, they, they, they couldn't have just said, okay, we don't care what you do, we, we'll just cut it up into chapters? Or how, how, do you, how do you get a book, an actual full-length book, that has only five chapters in it? 
big print. No, uh, look, here, here's, here's what I hear. Look, the, the collaborator uh, actually worked this book from top to bottom, so to the extent that this is a good read, there is someone responsible for it. But five chapters does suggest, no matter how good the writer is, that you've got to have something to say. Now, let's take the proposition that she does want to be Barack Obama and, and, and ride this book tour all the way into the White House. Uh, you've got to have something to say. The Audacity of Hope was a policy prescription book. Mm -hmm. So if she's only got five chapters that suggest she doesn't actually have much of a prescription in terms of all the challenges facing this country, that may uh, limit her scope for a three-year-long presidential campaign. Does it mean, though, that there's only going to be one chapter bashing the McCain campaign staffers? Oh, I think there's going to be plenty of that. And certainly the people who are handling her and trying to control her are bracing for the worst. They have to decide what they're going to do. But uh, she's going to name names. Uh, they say no holds barred. Uh, let's have at it. It'll be a great spectacle. Richard Wolf of MSNBC, author of Renegade, which does not come free with uh, jelly in glasses. Uh, and also, not, uh, yet. With, not yet. Well, maybe some of the leftover at the end there with uh, public strategies as well. Uh, as always, great thanks, Richard. Thank you, Keith.